Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is. It is true that I was the only one in the radio to warn you about the war on police yesterday. And unfortunately, many of my most loyal, dedicated listeners were not listening yesterday. They figured, look, it's the last week of uh, of uh, August. You know, there's no news. Well, there's a lot of news. There is a war on police. It was started by Obama, Holder, Sharpton, de Blasio, and the others who are calling for a war on police. There is now an epidemic of police shootings, another one now north of Chicago. And I think it's very important that we have this discussion again today, mixed in with all the other news, including the liar in chief who is pushing his climate change lie in order to screw the world out of billions of dollars. And I can prove it in several different ways, which I will do as the show emerges. But the issue is another police officer was killed today and it's not happening by accident. I gotta go back in time, because I've been in America a very long time, meaning I've spanned several generations. When I was a kid, in the 1950s, nobody killed a cop. And the reason nobody ever, ever, ever killed a cop in New York City in particular, was because if that happened, and it did happen rarely, I suppose, the city would come to a halt. And I was told by my father the reason no one, none of the criminals ever kill police, ever, is because the entire city will stop. Every policeman in the city will put on the beat to find that person. And that person or persons responsible for killing a cop will automatically get the death penalty. The judges were Americans then. The police were Americans then. Americans were Americans then. And now because of liberalism, the mental disorder, these are situations that have emerged into something entirely different. The situation has changed, in other words. And so, no, there is no around-the-clock manhunt. There's no guarantee that there'll be a death penalty because of the vermin in the ACLU and the other liberal uh, political organizations that always have sympathy for the devil. Speaking of sympathy for the devil, today, Kate Steinle's parents filed, well, I had a press conference saying they're going to file legal claims against San Francisco the sheriff, Murkarami, Murkikami, Sheriff Murkikami, and federal officials in the peer shooting death of her daughter, Kate. You remember that little story? Oh, you forgot it already? The alleged murderer, Jan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, a 45-year-old Mexican national who had been deported five times for multiple felonies, released by Sheriff Murkikami when the charges were dropped because of the city sanctuary laws. Well, the parents held a press conference today and we know what's going on now. And the shooter, the alleged shooter, Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez said the shooting was accidental. He said he found the 40 caliber gun on the pier by his feet and it accidentally went off. Well, we learned afterwards that the 40 caliber gun had been stolen from a Bureau of Land Management Ranger during a car break-in. Who's the ranger? Who is the moron in the BLM who has not yet been fired and tried for carelessness? Who is the BLM agent who lost the 40 caliber gun that Mr. Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez said he found underneath his feet? Well, anyway, they had a press conference. And now there's a manhunt for the killers of another cop. And the reason there's open season on cops is because of the war on police that was started by Barack Obama, Eric Holder, who was then Attorney General and now is enjoying a multi-million dollar a year reward for his great work as a lawyer. Al Sharpton, the street thug, uh, turned national political hero by Obama, and others who have called for a war on police. So criminals are no longer afraid of police for two reasons. They know that the police are intimidated by the vermin lawyers from NYU and Columbia who will put a policeman in jail for doing his job. You see, the new rule in America is the cop is hesitating. And as you well know, if you hesitate with a bad guy, you're going to lose. It's that simple. 
Well, that's exactly what Obama and Holder and Sharpton, de Blasio and others have wanted. And now there's a war on police who are reluctant to draw their gun, reluctant to take down a criminal for fear of a lawsuit by the vermin rats in the ACLU, all of whom should be deported and all of their assets seized, in my opinion. But you ought to thank God I'm only a talk show host with very strong and loud opinions. You ought to thank God I have no power in this country because the first thing I would do is decouple the ACLU from the legal system. That is the first thing that needs to be done. Decouple these communist rats from the legal system. Were they ever elected? Did you ever go to a polling place and were you given an option to vote for these communist anti-American vermin, these anti-Christian lawyers, these anti-American lawyers? Have you ever been given that option? And yet they're more powerful than the Supreme Court in determining which way this nation goes. One of the first things I would do is I would immediately indict them for various crimes and let them defend themselves. That's the first thing I would do. But I'm not a presidential candidate. I'm only a talk show host. It's one man's opinion. Never forget that. And so, again, here we are. Cops are dead. Another one dead. All because of uh, the, the individuals I mentioned. And I did this for three hours yesterday. I wake up today saying I'm not going to do it again. And then I wake up to this. Manhunt underway north of Chicago for three suspects in the murder of a police officer, armed gunman, uh, traffic stop, shot him, stole his gun, stole his gear, and ran into the woods. No pictures yet of, of any of them. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they look like. They're described as two white males and one black male, but further than that, we don't know. Let's hope that there were some body cameras or helmet cameras uh, in that department, which will show it, show who they are. But I want to go back to yesterday because many of you missed my, my finest moment, one of my finest moments on radio. And I'm not going to do this to the exclusion of all the other news. There's a lot of it, by the way. I want to play for you a montage from yesterday, which will be self-explanatory. Jim, fire it, please. Since Ferguson and no, the Jim. task force that we put together, we have seen too many instances of what appears to be police officers uh, interacting with individuals, uh, primarily African-American, often poor, uh, in ways that raise troubling questions. And you don't judge the fight on one round. Even if we get knocked down, we get up and go to the corner and come out fighting the next round. You won the first round, Mr. Prosecutor, but don't cut your gloves off, because the fight's not over. Justice will come to Ferguson. Our police officers cannot be and cannot be seen as an occupying force disconnected to the communities that they serve. I'm looking for 10,000 in the midst of the million. 10,000 fearless yes, men who say death is sweeter than continued life under tyranny. Death is sweeter than to continue to live and bury our children. What parents have done for decades this who have children of color, especially young men of color, York. is train them to be very careful when they have a connection with a police officer, when they have an encounter really? with a police officer. We cannot right. just go from episode to episode, city Street to city. Thug. There must Sharp be a thing. national response. The federal government there must come in go. and intervene ah, on yeah. the issues yeah. of yeah. criminal you, justice yeah. and policing. Yeah. And we yeah. must rise up and ah. kill oh, those insane. who kill us. Oh, Stop kill those. them and Stop kill them. them. And kill and them. And let them feel oh. the pain of death that we are feeling. When anybody in this country is not mm -hmm. being treated equally under the law, uh -huh, that's a problem. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it's my job as president to help solve it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, you get the picture in a broad stroke. You get the picture. Michael Savage wrote Stop the Coming Civil War a year ago. I warned you that Obama had an intention and he has conducted a civil war against all civil aspects of this society from the day he seized power. From the day he was foisted upon us by forces we will never ever comprehend. This man has had a vendetta against the institutions that have made this nation great. 
And one of the institutions that stands in the way of his total and complete takeover of this nation are the local police forces in the country. He has already decapitated the military, which is why they're not fighting ISIS. There's some grumbling down below the colonel level from those who say we could have knocked ISIS out in a week. But no one's asking questions in the media, are they, Mr. Roger Ailes, as to why the president of the United States is not taking down ISIS, not yet a subject on the great Fox News network. I dismiss all the other networks because they were dismissed by the American people of uh, a thinking nature a long time ago. But the last link that we had of any hope was the Fox News network until it was destroyed completely in the recent past by a new management uh, and a new management style. It is now the CNN of our time. They will not ask the real questions, which is why is there a war on the police? Did Obama's rhetoric have anything to do with it? Why is ISIS still functioning? Why, have, uh, why is the U.S. military never, ever, ever uh, been given the targets of the training camps to, to attack? Uh, the U.S. Air Force could eliminate these training camps in a very, very short period of time, killing everybody in them or destroying them so they're useless. We even know where the camps are. I saw a map of them the other day. And yet your president, the commander in chief, will not offer a strike against them. But now we go back to the war on police. And the reason Obama wants a war on police is so evident to anyone with a, a, the ability to reason that I'll lay it out for you if you can't think. And it's as simple as this. He wants to show how bad the police are. Uh, against minorities. You see, most of the police in America are white, and that's a crime to Barack Obama. You understand that. He has a racial lens on his uh, iris, and he can only see things through a racial lens. It's worked for him. If you read his own autobiography, he said he really not didn't have a racial consciousness when he was a young biracial man in Hawaii. He never thought about it. And then something happened after being a pot-smoking uh, wayward youth in Pepperdine University, I believe, when he was an ordinary American kid, not political, he said in his own autobiography, he went to Columbia University, a once great university, which has become a cesspool of anti-Americanism. And at Columbia University, he joined in with the communists, the white commies and the black radicals, and he grew his hair out, he said, his own words now, I'm not making anything up. And he said he noticed something happened. People were suddenly paying attention to him in a different way. And look where it got him. Just look how far it got him. It worked for him. Now, if you were him, would you stop the rhetoric of your youth if it's made you the president of the United States? What would have you stop it? It doesn't matter how many countries die or how many people die. All that matters is that you're having a grand old narcissistic time. And on that note, I'll take a break. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Extra, extra, hear all about it. Another cop killed by another group of thugs, killed during a traffic stop. War on police rages while Obama talks about saving the polar bears. The Dow is down 400 points. We're talking about the war on police triggered by this radical administration well over a year ago as part of their overall plan to eliminate local police departments and federalize them so that we have the equivalent of the SA and the SS reporting only to their Führer. That's how it works, you see? And if you like the way the Mexican federales operate, hey, get used to it, buddy, because that's what Obama has in mind for the United States of America. One gigantic federalized police force reporting to Al Sharpton. Can you imagine? You say it can't happen here? Well, my friends, wake up. It happened while you were here. Now let's go to my time in America. This would never have happened in my time when I was a kid. If a cop was shot in New York City when I was a boy, the entire city would come to a halt. And at the time, there were, what, 20 or 30,000 police? Every cop, whether they were off duty or on duty, would be called in, and there'd be an around-the-clock manhunt. And moreover, the underworld would put their own resources to finding that cop killer because they understood that it was very bad for business and so even the underworld, the criminals work with the cops to get the cop killer. 